They run in the rain. They march under the scorching summer sun. For centuries now, young Nepalese men have trained hard to join the British Army. They select four main tribes to British Army. Gurung, Magar, Rai, Limbu. They have their own unique cultures and they, they are very honest and bravery. That is why this British government has have chosen these four tribes. The Gurung are one of the most famous tribes of Nepal. A hardy people of Tibeto-Burman descent, they are thought to have crossed the Himalayas many thousands of years ago and settled the southern slopes, particularly around the mighty Annapurna range. They look similar to the Chinese, Asian, but their culture tradition is more likely this Chinese and like all uh, lodging, fooding style is British because British train them. If you visit the area, you cannot fail to be impressed by the beautifully constructed terraces hewn from steep hillsides. Historically, the Gurung were animal herders, migrating pastoralists growing a little grain to supplement the meat and milk from sheep and cows. Now they are fairly evenly balanced between pastoral and arable production. The higher one gets and the further from the towns, the more important animals become. The goats are bred for meat, goat meat being preferred to sheep, and the sheep are kept mainly for their wool. On the lower terraces and fields, crops such as rice, maize and wheat are cultivated. In October and November, the animals are brought down through the forests and reach the newly harvested rice fields in time to eat the stubble and manure the fields. When the millet has been harvested, they are moved to those fields so that wheat can be grown as a second crop on the rice fields. They then remain near the village until the spring, when the cycle of migration starts again. The migration is dangerous and it's estimated that about half of all lambs and kids born each year are killed by tigers and leopards. A visitor will find the Gurung charming and hospitable. But they are also known for their bravery, loyalty and an unparalleled sense of duty. So the British Army have employed them as Gurkhas for around 200 years. More than 43,000 lost their lives fighting for Britain during World War II. As a result, some of them have, after a lifetime of service, settled with their families in Britain. Gurungs in Swindon often come originally from this village called Kalabang Garadi. With a strong community spirit, they have formed an association or samaj to provide assistance to the village or to members of the community who might be in need in the UK. Our uh, Kalabangaredi Samas UK was uh, established in 2009. We felt that was really needed for our members. Once we have started to migrate, then we have very limited chances to see each other. We thought our life was a really hard life. The reason why I'm saying hard life is wherever we go, everything we faced a difficulty, i.e. we have a language barrier, 
we have a society a difference and people are scattered living in united kingdom and we have a big community in back in village as well uh, and they are trying from their end to develop our samaj and uh, village most of the remote area there were no electricity long time ago but nowadays there are lots electricity transport system The amount of effort spent in carrying water to the village has been greatly reduced by the introduction of water pipes. We have to develop our village. We have to, uh, we have to be open our eyes and to educate our children, so we can develop and we can make our community and village better. <laughs> we normally arrange a function which normally we celebrate while we were in the village. In a similar way, we want to celebrate here as well. A, like a huge group of us coming in and celebrating, appreciating one, of, one another, and also again learning from one another. We wear our traditional clothes as well. That is also respecting our ancestors and how they celebrated in the past in the village, and now how we've now adapted to here. Gurung New Year, we call Locha. That's the New Year's coming in, end of December lots of dancing um, and it's always traditional music we always play. Normally what was happened in the past in Nepal, in October time we have a Deepawali. That's Hindu festival, Netflix festival. On the festival brother and sister, cousins get together and go every single homes and music put on, dancing, and we call Deushure, Deushure. And every home, they give some gift, like a couple of rupees, 10 rupees, 20 rupees, 30 rupees, they collected every home. And they have gathered that amount and celebrate Locha. If you celebrate that sort of function or festival here, at the same time, we also pass on our culture, tradition, onto our next generation. So this culture of ours, this traditions of ours, it's part of us and we should always devote ourselves to it. So I think the Gurung people in the UK should always take interest. I mean, you know, we, we, we always take interest in British culture. You know, we get involved in Christmas, we love Christmas. When it's our time, when it's Losar, or when it's Dase, you know, whatever the occasion is, I think we should always be part of it, you know, appreciate who you are, and don't ever forget about your culture and your traditions because that's what makes you who you are. We have very unique culture of the Guru. They have their own uh, language or dialogue where other Nepalese people don't understand and they have own costume, own ritual tradition which is done by Buddhist monk, Lama, whereas no other tribes have that kind of tradition. When children burn, we call puja, or read by old Lama, Buddhist monk. Nowadays, there are Gurung Lama as well, which is priest, we, normally it's Padre or Push, priest, they do. And this is very unique culture. Even though I'm building a bridge between them two, 
I do sometimes see myself more towards the British culture than my own. So I'm just going to say really appreciate this culture of yours because you can see every single day how your grandparents and your parents and your uncles and your aunts devote themselves into this community and it's a beautiful community and I think we should always sort of appreciate that every single day. Gurung religious traditions derive from Buddhist, Hindu and animist practices and their festivals too are freely drawn from these traditions. They have no caste system nor are much interested in class division. They love to sing and dance and their festivals are extremely colourful. In British culture, it's known that when you're 18 or when you're in a certain age, you leave home. Whereas in our culture, we stay at home, no, like no matter what. We stay at home until marriage or anything happens, but we stay at home and we respect our elders. You make your own decisions and you do all these things, but we do that in our own household. My daughter, she born in Hong Kong while I was in the army, and she studied in the United Kingdom as well. My parents, they have a very wide knowledge of culture and tradition. They can't communicate, they can't teach new generation because of the language barrier. Our children, they don't speak that much Nepalese language. I would say it is a huge issue that us young generation aren't as involved. We're not showing much more attendance and we're not showing much more um, interest and I think it's because the way we grew up here that's now affected the way we see and our views of what our adults are doing now. It'd be nice if we were more involved. <laughs> it's all members need to subscribe 20 pounds annually so that that stay there and should there be any problem or need a financial help to our members, then we committee members decide, look, this is this is happening, what is the next step for us? We wanted to do some project of helping to school. Specifically. So that we could raise a money for the village school and also a picnic destination which is naturally is really good place. It's now a good reputation and it attracts more tourists, internal and foreigner. There is a huge difference, the life there and the life here. Life here for me I feel more free and it's not because of like how I grew up but it's just the way I am here. The education is not the same because it's more of a poor developed country. It's difficult for us young generation to be in education and the facilities there are completely different. Mainly sort of hands-on experience. You do more, sometimes you do village work, you do a lot of housework and us women are now, you know, being there at home and doing the work at home instead of making a name for ourselves and going out and, you know, building career and it's just in Nepal it's completely different. It's a lot of family life. Now 
nowadays we try to mingle with every single community. Now I feel like this society is now more accepting um, people from you know, different backgrounds and ethnicity. So for me, it's just I feel equal, I feel normal here, like my freedom is the same. There is a culture clash, always. There are people who don't understand tra our traditions and our cultures and where we come from. And I think sometimes that creates a barrier. As we live here, we are more adapted to their culture, where they have lack of knowledge about ours. It's, they don't sometimes see it the way we see it, like they're our perspective. We have a functions every year in London, Nepalese fate. Nepal is a small country, but so many tribes, 36 tribes, and they have their own culture. So we do as a carnival and every single community has performed their own custom tradition on the day. As a parent or as an uncle or anything, you would like to encourage your young children to know so much about their own culture because it's obviously who they are. And I think sometimes they just need to be patient <laughs> Um, because understanding doesn't come straight away. Gurungs are very experienced at cooperating with other cultures and their ability to work collectively without quarrelling stems from an affectionate and tolerant upbringing of children who are very rarely struck. They grow up with a strong respect for elders and family life. Family and community fulfil many of the functions that are often outsourced to social services in the West. Marriage has been traditionally seen as too important to the whole family to leave to the whim of the individuals, and the choice of spouse has been seen as a family affair. Though this seems to be changing with increased westernization. However, if the partners cannot get along, the wife will often return to her family, and the marriage is easily dissolved in the early years. Marriages, once established, are deep and affectionate relationships and most husbands and wives are very close. Women have higher status than in most Asian societies and are generally considered the equals of men. Children under five tend to be cosseted but older children are treated as adults and usually work hard. Traditionally farming the steep slopes of the highest mountains in the world, it's no wonder they are a hardy people. Girls from about 14 will carry loads that most Europeans could only manage for a few yards. Gurungs place a high value on education for their children, and much of the support sent back to the mother village is in the form of resources and equipment for the schools. A very cooperative people, they're good at self-government through reaching consensus. Loyal and honest, they are largely incorruptible. Crimes of violence, too, are virtually unknown. They respect each other and do as they wish to be done by. The skill of the Gurung lies in their ability to live in many environments, holding their core strength in the family and community. They adapt well and never completely bend the pressure of any situation, retaining their good humour, tolerance and practicality wherever they go.